drinking some coffee. And I was looking at the line in, at Chick-fil-A. Three lines starting at 1030 in the morning. And I stayed there for an hour. It never let up. I said, ain't no way in hell that a chicken sandwich tastes that good. So I said, let me see. Uh, I wonder what they're putting in it. And I started doing the research right at the time that you remember, you know, in the hood, there was this argument, Popeye's versus Chick-fil-A. And everybody was going back and forth. And people, you seen people at Popeye's, man, got shot. The man shot somebody because they didn't have no more chicken sandwiches left. I mean, I said, I said, this ain't no regular chicken sandwiches. So I went and looked up Popeye's chicken sandwich. Come to find out they have 40, over 40 ingredients in the Popeye's chicken sandwich. 32 of them were man-made chemicals. And I said, well, let's see what Chick-fil-A has. Over 50 chemicals in the chicken sandwich. Over 40 of them were man-made chemicals. I said, so hell, this is a dope sandwich. So they, hell, they really are flipping birds over there. They, I mean, because there's no way in the world to justify. So whenever I seen that, um, I said it in a message. And someone took the clip of it and then went on the website of Chick-fil-A, had it broke down where they were clicking on it, showing all of the ingredients and these chemicals that were in it. Do you know the next day Chick-fil-A took that down off their website? So now, now you can't find the ingredients to the Chick-fil-A sandwich or the Popeye's uh, chicken sandwich because they don't want you to know that they're drugging you, that they're doping you, that, that they, are, they have you wanting the food not for nutrition or value, but because you become addicted by the MSG and the other chemicals that they've inserted in that also are immune. So this is all plastic. Holy shit. <laughs> That's a river you're looking at. I mean, I've never seen this amount of trash anywhere. It's really hard to, to comprehend, to see this amount of trash in, in, in one place. I've never seen anything like it and it's, um, it, it's, it's profoundly sad and I think it's even more sad if you realize what a beautiful country it is where you're, you're in and you see you know, rainforests, forests, you see beautiful valleys and mountains and volcanoes and then you look down at this river and surely there are literal garbage dumps that are cleaner than, than this river. It's just really sad. So this is really the, the bank of, of the river here and it's quite astounding to think that you know, if we estimate there may be a 10 million to 30 million kilos of plastic flowing through this gorge every single year. If that were true, on one hand that means it's about 10 times more than all the plastic that's being put in the ocean from all the rivers in the United States. And secondly, it means that that equates to, to roughly 1 to 3 percent of all the plastic entering the oceans every year, which is which is just, just mind-boggling. Just one river 
emitting perhaps as much as 3% of, of all the plastic that's going to the oceans, passing right through this, this gorge. All right, Shalom. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, by Shem Rakak Wadash. And double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone for teaching this truth that's gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hope of the elect out there. It's your brother, Atajwan, by our fact addicts. With another short lesson, okay, and um, we watched those clips, okay, and uh, you can't say that Esau Edom is not the devil, because if he's not, then who is, all right? You know, this earth is suffering, okay, not just the people, but the planet itself behind Esau's strategies to make more money for himself, all right? They're the ones who are in control of all the products, all right? They're, they're in control of the use of materials, and so therefore they should be responsible for the discarding of those same materials, right? But what do they do? They gather it up, and they take it, and they ship it, they put it on barges, and send it out to the middle of the ocean and dump it, right? So that it fills up all the lakes, all the streams and rivers, all right, particularly over here in the Western Hemisphere, where you'll find all this trash floating in all the waterways, right? <clears throat> to the point of going down even into South America, okay? And, and, and Brazil and so forth, right? Because Brazil itself, some of those areas, you know, are, are slums, okay? They keep the people poor and impoverished, all right? And they've, they've done that in various different uh, Latin American countries, okay? So anyway, let's get to the scripture. This is uh, Isaiah 14, and we'll read a lot of, well, I'm, I'm not going to say a lot, but we'll go up a little bit and read a few more verses, but this is kind of where I wanted to start, all right? This is Isaiah 14 and 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the houses or Salaki or the house of his prisoners, right? And that's Esau, Edom, right? The devil, okay, all right? Lucifer, if you will, all right? These are the ones who are controlling everything, all right? And, and brought nothing but but, but, but death, okay, uh, with all of their wicked devices, okay, um, from GMO foods to lead in the water to plastic in almost everything you could think of, using plastic for everything, okay, and now there's no way to, to uh, get rid of it, right, fucking up the ecosystem, right, uh, shrimp in the waters, right? Killing or taking uh, the bottom feeders and, and making it delicacies, okay? Which causes the seas and the rivers to be filthy, all right? This man is truly the devil and we can't wait for him to be taken out of power, all right? So now if we just scroll up just a little bit, I think I marked a couple of verses here, all right? Let's look at um, Isaiah 14 and 5 and it reads, the Lord Yahweh hath broken the staff of the wicked and the sepulchre of rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying since Thou art laid down, no fella has come up against us, right? And so there's going to be a time in righteousness when this devil is out of power, right? He can no longer harm the earth, harm the people, okay? When he's taken out of power, that even the animals, even the trees are going to rejoice, okay? All right? And so we saw those two clips, all right, of how... They are poisoning the food using chemicals, okay, right? And I've always said that, you know, just like um, 
I don't know, you could you could think back to maybe 10, 15, 15 years ago when people were all on this Starbucks craze. I used to joke about it. I wasn't in the truth then, but I used to joke about it, you know, and, and tell people, I said, they put heroin <laughs> in that Starbucks coffee. You know, why else would you be willing to pay $7 for, for a cup of coffee? And you can't stop yourself from going there, right? I used to joke about that. Okay. All right. So, so it's no wonder that this man is uh, drugging you, right, with the addictive chemicals that they're putting in, you know, putting it in the food, right? So, and they disguise it with what different types of seasonings, you know, peppers and you know, like cayenne pepper and uh, uh, um, garlic powder and things of that nature. You see. Um, so let's go over here to Genesis and read something real quick, all right? Genesis uh, 27, 38, and it reads, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. All right, so Esau's gift all right, or blessing, if you will, since Jacob supplanted him, all right, and got the kingdom, and we're Jacob, okay, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native, Native Americans, right, <clears throat> Esau, the so-called white man, he got a temporary blessing, which is of the earth, all right, and his rulership is just about done, okay, so that's why when you see Esau, he's got everything, okay, there's no need to envy him because he got a five million dollar house, you know, or his his kids went to private school and you know all these different things. They're the most famous uh, of everything. They're the CEOs, the CFOs of all the major companies, and you know they're the big time judges and doctors and federal court this that and the third. All right, that's their blessing. You see. Going on to verse 40, and it reads, And by the sword shalt thou live, right? They used the sword to kill, to maim, right? To confiscate, to rob, to steal, to pillage, to rape, all right? To shed innocent blood. And that's how they conquered the earth, okay? And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck, Esau hated Jacob, right? So that's why you still have that perpetual hatred between what we commonly call blacks and whites, okay? Even to the Latino tribes, okay? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning of my father are at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob, right? So they've always wanted to do away with us and get us off of the planet, right? By using all their various little tactics and tricks and setting up the fucking board of education and all these different things, right? These kids got, they set up truancy, okay? You know, your kids don't go to school, you know, you get in trouble, blah, 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 but before you can come to our public schools, your kids gotta be what? Vaccinated. Shooting you with poison ever since you was a little kid. Okay, all these different experiments They've been found guilty. You see, they've been found guilty and everything about them is coming out. You see? So now from there, let's just quickly move on. I got to kind of get a run on this. Uh, we got a class tonight, so I'm trying to get this done. Let's go over here to Job 9 and 24. All right, which backs up. Uh, what we just read in Genesis, right? Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And he covered the faces of the judges thereof and the judges would be the real Israelites, okay? Jacob, if you will, all right? If not, where and who is he, right? If this man is not the devil, then show him, show, show, show us who the other devil, who the devil is then, if it's not Esau, Edom, okay? And we've got a couple more scriptures to go. Right. So this is uh, Jeremiah 49 and 10, and like I said, we make this quick, okay? 
We'll start right here, verse 10, and it reads, But I have made Esau bare, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. And that's what's going on right now in our lifetime, right? 50 years ago, 60 years ago, right? Hell, even 30 years ago, most of us didn't know the information that we know now about the things that Esau had done and the things that they had set in motion even at the turn of the 20th century or the 1900s, right? Because what they plan, they plan for 70, 80, 90 years down the road what they're going to do, okay? But all of these things are coming out now, all right? They were here for a little while, but now Esau is exposed, okay? To the point that you know now who Esau really is, okay, in this day and time, all right? But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered the secret. I have uncovered his secret place, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave thy father's children, I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, behold, they whose judgment was not, was not to drink of the cup, had assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it, right? The Israelites caught the, uh, 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 the wrath of the Lord, right, and put into all these different captivities, right? We still got the curses on us and all these different things. We drink of the cup, okay? And now it's your turn, Esau, Edom, all right? And, and, and you're going to catch hell, all right? Verse 13, for I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord Yahweh, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse in Basra is an ancient city of the Edomites, right? Where they ran things and controlled things, and you can liken that to what? America, today, okay? This is the head of their empire, if you will, right? This is a place where all people from all nations have come, you see, a melting pot, all right, where they made all of these promises of land and opportunity and this and that and a third, okay, it's, it's a prison without walls, you see, and now you're starting to see the, the dirt and the filth, all right, it's, it's, it's all in the earth because of Esau eating, right? But it's Capitol Headquarters down there in Washington, D.C., where they pump out all the wine, all the philosophies, okay? Where they, where they pump out all the policies and they pump out all of the strategies of how they're going to invade other countries and so on and so forth, you see? Verse 13 again, for I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basel shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. All right, that's a day that's coming, all right, for this place. Known in the scriptures, you know, by the name of Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, right? Spiritual Sodom and Egypt and Basra, right? Among other names, you see? But their time is up, okay? And uh, they've, they've been exposed, okay? And they're going to be held accountable by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And all this shit that they've been spewed out here, they're going to be responsible for cleaning it up in the end. All right? So anyway, this is uh, 2 Ezra 6. And let's just, uh, let's see. Let's just start right here. Um, make it quick. Verse 27. And it reads, for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched, right? And they've got that evil and they've got that deceit, okay? Because Esau is a, is a liar and a murderer, okay? And all that's going to be put out of the earth, okay? Verse 28, as for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Okay, all right. So that righteousness is on its way, right? Through Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Okay.
okay? There's a, there is an expiration date, okay, on Esau, Edom himself, and his kingdom, okay? And we don't have much longer to, much, much longer to go, okay? Let's get this last scripture and we'll wrap it up, okay? Because as it's prophesied right here in the scriptures, okay? It's 2 Ezra 6, and we start right there at verse 7. And it reads, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? He said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, right? The end of this wicked rulership, right? Because he had his dominion, he had his time, okay? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of the man is betwixt the heel and the hand, okay? So, Yahweh Shai is coming to pull this man out of power, all right? And pretty much that's it. Like I said, I just wanted to hit it and quit it, okay? Not to make too much of a long lesson out of it, but, you know, this is just a continual reminder of who you're dealing with when you're out there in the world, Jay, okay? These people are wicked that are behind the scenes, okay? Now, your low-level Edomites, you know, they may be wicked in their own right, you know? They may be your boss, your supervisor, a co-worker, or whatever the case may be. You know, through the spirit, you know, a man or woman that's in the truth, you can tell through the spirit whether they eat them or not, all right? And they may be wicked, but ultimately they're not the ones that's really controlling anything, okay? They're just, they're just a damn overseer, all right? But the system in and of itself being run by the wicked elite, the international bankers, you know, these are the ones that are at the top of the food chain, okay? All right, they're the ones responsible for mucking up the whole planet, okay? And so this is why, you know, we constantly try to encourage brothers and sisters, stay in the faith, you know, right? Stay, stay in the truth. We don't have much longer to go. Just, just hold on, all right? Just hold on, all right? So with that, I'll end the lesson right there. Give it all praise, honor, and glory. Unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakak, Badash. All right, and double honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. See you all again with another lesson real soon, Lord willing. Shalom.